Thank you very much for joining this webinar. I'm Andreas Fonini. I'm the development manager at Single Quantum, and I'm going to talk about the new standard in single photon detection. I would like to start my presentation with a little history of single quantum. Here on the right side, you can see a picture which was taken in 2016, where the two co-founders, Professor Val Swiller and Sander Dorenbos, try in a Dutch style to deliver an SNSPD system with a bicycle. After this more humorous introduction, I would like to focus here now on the timeline of the development of SNSPDs and the growth path of, of single quantum. SNSPDs are a very new technology. So they were first invented in 2001 at the University of Rochester. So they're only 20 years old. In 2005, the, the Zwiller Group, uh, TU Delft, started to investigate uh, these devices for applications. And only seven years later, single quantum was founded. The first devices they have produced had 20% detection efficiency and a timing jitter of about 100 picosecond. Now in 2020, single quantum has shipped more than 150 single quantum AO system so far. And we can reach now up to 95% detection efficiency and we could reduce the timing jitter at least tenfold, and we can deliver you now with sub 10 picosecond timing jitter systems. On the next few slides, I want to focus on the technology of SNSPDs and their working principle. On the right side, you see a typical SCM image of an SNSPD device. So usually it consists of a nanowire structure fabricated out of a superconducting thin film material, usually about 10 nanometers in thickness. And the meander has about a diameter of about 15 micrometers and is about one millimeter long. Now, if a single photon is absorbed somewhere in this nanowire structure, it renders that specific spot resistive, and then you can measure a voltage drop over its connection leads. That's how you translate a photonic signal into an electrical signal. The detection mechanism of an SNSPD works as follows. First, the nanowire is biased with a current close to the critical current of the superconductor. Now, if a single photon is absorbed in the nanowire, it renders a small spot resistive because it breaks up the Cooper pairs in that region. Now the supercurrent is diverted around that hotspot where it surpasses the critical current density and also eventually breaks up. A hotspot is formed and uh, generates a resistive barrier. This change in resistance is very large. It is a quantum phase change. And this can be easily detected at the leads of the nanowire. After the resistive barrier has been formed, the cooling phase starts and the superconductivity slowly recovers, typically on the order of a few nanoseconds. And then the detector is again ready to detect the next single photon. Upon the absorption of a single photon, a small voltage pulse is generated over the leads of the SNSPD on the order of a millivolt. This signal is rather small, so use an amplification stage to enlarge that signal to about one volt in amplitude. You can see here a typical oscilloscope traced of a single photon absorption event. So at the beginning, the breaking of the superconductor happens very quickly. Here we have a rise time of about 300 picoseconds, and then the decay is because of the induction of the nanowire limited to a time constant of a few nanoseconds. Why would you choose 
single quantums as an SPD system. I've assembled here a few nice icons to explain this question. First of all, we can provide you with very high efficiency detectors up to 95%. And also we can customize the detectors to your wavelength and to your needs. We are world leaders in low timing jitter. That means how well can we define the time of the arrival of a photon to the electrical output pulse. Our system is completely plug and play. So also the electronics, you can just plug it into your computer. You don't need to install any software. It works on any operating system. You can even use it directly from your cell phone. It works 24 seven. So you don't have any missed photons in your experiments. And we have more than 100 happy customers in the world. And we have a very well, very thought through dedicated service system. Single quantums as an SPDs have the world's best timing jitter. What do we mean by timing jitter? Timing jitter is defined as the variation in delay between the absorption of a photon and the generation of an electrical output pulse. To measure that, we use a pulsed laser and we measure many, many of these differences of the arrival times. And we build a histogram out of that. A single quantum system can provide you with the best timing jitter in the world for single photon resolution. I have depicted here two different options we provide to our customers. Namely, you have the choice to even have a system with standard amplifiers or with cryogenic amplifiers cooled to about 30 Kelvin. The difference is quite striking. With standard amplifiers, we reach a time resolution typically on the order of 35 picoseconds full width half maximum for uh, 1550 nanometer telecom devices. A typical cheetah distribution is depicted here on the left. However, if for your experiments, time resolution is absolutely crucial, then you should go for the cryogenic amplifiers. Here we can reach typically around 13 picoseconds full width half maximum as seen here on the right cheetah distribution. But the best cases we have delivered so far are with cheetah values even below 10 picosecond. In the following few slides, I would like to highlight a few new developments from single quantum. I would like to start with a high country solutions. Here we have an old technology, which is patent is pending, where we can reach very high count rates, currently up to a gigahertz. We have done lots of engineering efforts to maintain high efficiency at high count rates for our SNSPDs. It is a common misconception that one thinks that the count rate of an SNSPD is given by one over its dead time. It usually takes about three times longer than the dead time of an SNSPD that the efficiency completely recovers. Hence, a special care and optimization needs to be applied. Here in this graph, you can see our current technology where we can achieve almost no efficiency change with a excitation of up to 50 megahertz at telecom of 1550 nanometers. However, for very demanding applications, it's important that we can go even higher in count rate without the loss of efficiency. Therefore, we have developed a new technology, the patent is currently pending, with which we can go way above 100 megahertz count rates without the loss of efficiency. On the knees, you see a curve, where on the x-axis, you see the excitation rate in megahertz, and on the y-axis, you see the change in internal 
efficiency. So for an ideal device, this would just stay flat at zero. And you can see for this device, which we measured here at 13, 10 nanometers, indeed, there is no decrease of internal efficiency till 100 megahertz. We expect these devices to work well beyond 100 megahertz. We were just currently li limited by our measurement setup to this frequency. Also, we're working on developing a new product which can go till 1 gigahertz in count rate. We are very proud to announce that we have developed a new kind of detector which also has photon number resolution capabilities. We achieved this with a single pixel architecture and it was long thought that this is actually impossible. The benefit of a single pixel architecture are that you have no missed photons compared to a multi-pixel architecture. And in our case, the photo number information is encoded in the pulse arrival time. That means you can uh, achieve this photo number resolution with a simple time correlator you most likely already have in your lab. Let's have a look how that works in detail. Here you can see two images. On the left, a schematic of the measurement setup, and on the right, the outcome of this photo number resolution experiment. Let's start with the setup. So everything starts with a picosecond laser. In our case, we have a picosecond laser with a two picosecond full width half maximum. Then we have an attenuator, attenuating uh, these laser pulses into the single photon regime. Then there's an SNSPD, which had been optimized for photon number resolution. There's SQ electronics, and then the signal is going to a time correlator. Now the time correlator measures the time difference between the start pulse coming from the picosecond laser and the stop pulse coming from the photon number resolving detector. Then there's a PC to analyze the data. Now on the right side, you can see the outcome of uh, such an experiment. You can see on the y-axis the probability of measuring a certain time difference, so the difference between the start and the stop event, and the x-axis is the skew, so this is the, the time difference. You can see that we can nicely resolve the different photon number events from n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and even higher order. The two different colors represent here two different um, average photon number densities per pulse. In blue we have a mu of 0 0.2 and in orange we have 0 0.7 uh, in average photons per pulse. For the lower flux one, the blue one, we expect to see mostly n equals 1 events, and that is what you can see at 20 picosecond, there is predominantly one peak. But there's a second peak at 80 picosecond, which is for higher order events here, n equals 2. Now, if you crank up the laser power, you expect to see more higher order events, and this is precisely what we see here. So the n equal 1 is going down, but then we see more events at n equals 3 and even above n equals 3. This is the typical Poissonian distribution coming from uh, a laser. So in summary, I can tell you we have developed a photon number resolution detector. The large benefit is it's a single pixel architecture, so you can analyze it with the time correlator you most likely have already in your lab. And if you're interested in this technology, please contact our sales. Not only have we been innovating on count rates and photo number resolution, but also on the type of fibers you can use with our single quantum system. Often we hear that customers would like to use multimode fibers because there it is easier 
to couple from the outside world than for a single mode case. For these kind of applications, we're developing multimode detectors. Multimode fiber coupled SNSPD is a new product which we're developing at Single Quantum. The main benefit of multimode fibers, as you can see here, one on the left side in the image, is because they have now many modes, it is much easier to couple light into them, for example, from a spectrometer, telescope, etc. On the right hand side, you can see an image of uh, an efficiency versus bias current curve. So you can see the devices uh, we're currently investigating. They have a nice saturation. They almost reach 70% efficiency, but you need to take into account that the efficiency is usually lower for multi-mode coupled SNSPDs than if they would be coupled to single mode. And that is because a multi-mode fiber scrambles the polarization. And because SNSPDs are very polarization sensitive, one expects always a lower efficiency for a multi-mode uh, coupled SNSPD. However, because you get a lot more coupling into the fiber because of the multimode characteristics, it can still be uh, in your benefit for your experiments. Researchers at the University of Eindhoven have managed to grow hexagonal silicon germanium nanowires. The benefit of this structure is that it renders the usual non-optical active materials like silicon and germanium into a direct band gap material and hence you can get photoluminescence out of it. They used our single quantum SNSPD systems to record the photoluminescence out of these devices. Here on the left side you see such a nanowire which has been transferred to a silicon wafer it was excited with a femtosecond laser at 1030 nanometers and then the photoluminescence was time resolved and measured at 2 micrometer. And on the right side you can see such a PL graphs for different temperatures. Very exciting research. Another main application of SNSPD systems is in the entanglement distribution and quantum secure telecommunication. Here, for example, researchers from uh, TU Delft, from the QTEC collaboration, uh, used an SNSPD system to show that they can get a high fidelity between diamond spin and photon entanglement. What they've done here is that usually the NV centers in diamond uh, emit at the wavelength where fibers are not highly transparent. So you have to translate them into the telecom band. That is what they've done with a periodically pulled lithium niobate crystal. So they uh, down convert the single photon at 630 nanometers into a photon at 1588 nanometers and they used our detectors to measure these single photon events. So very uh, nice work with a, with a lot of applications in the field of the, the quantum internet. And last but not least, researchers from uh, Dresden, they uh, used our SNSPDs with very high efficiency of uh, more than 90% at the uh, telecom wavelength to characterize the photoluminescence of uh, defects in uh, silicon on insulator wafers. And they could show here very nice research where they uh, showed uh, the, the single photon nature of uh, the light coming out from these defect states, uh, very stable count rates and uh, very high count rates depending on the laser power. Also, this very exciting uh, to see what can be done with our SNSPD systems. Well, this was it. I hope I could give you a nice 
flavor of the work we do at Single Quantum, the exciting new uh, devices we're building, new concepts we are working on, and gave you a little bit a glimpse of what can be done with uh, SNSPDs in terms of application. Thank you very much for your attention and I wish you a good day.